both in terms of daily operating data and in terms of well test data. So we took our morning report system, we built a little section on the side that, when they, that the engineers can go in once a week and put these operating targets in there. When the guys get online every morning, they put, here's my readings. If it's outside of that variance by more than 5%, it highlights it. And guess what? All of a sudden, we got production guys who now know what the expectations at least are for that well. Um, we take that, we, we, the next thing we did is said, all right, now we're, 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 we've created a mechanism that's going to give us a little heads up on when something appears to be out of whack, something out of variance. What do you do with that? Well, we, we formalized the process that was, that's kind of occurring already out there, which is we have a daily meeting where the, usually it's in the morning and the PIC or the foreman sit down with the guys and go, what's going on? Well, now all of a sudden, we got something to talk about if there's a variance on anyone in, or any of the individual wells. So we created what we call a daily action log and a daily meeting, which the purpose of is to review operating data and downtime. And what comes out of that is a daily action log. And that daily action log is not just about the production things going on, but it certainly, if it has an issue with the well, it's now highlighted. We take that same information and, and we start looking at it on a weekly basis we look at the same thing. What are the individual wells? What's going on with those? How are things different? But we also, at that weekly meeting, we roll in well tests and performance measures. And we, we've actually sat down and said there's three numbers we want to measure ourselves to. One is uh, here's our targets, the sum of all the, tar all the individual wells. That's one target for oil and gas production. The other is here's the theoretical production, which is the total of all your well tests. And then the final is the actual. So we want to sit down and look at how well do we do to targets, how well do we do to our theoreticals, and, 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 and engage the guys in the field into managing that data on a, on a weekly basis. And, and when we're out of target, this, this creates a dialogue that occurs between our field guys and our engineering guys. And, and none of this stuff is, is rocket science. What I'm describing to you is, uh, is, is kind of um, uh, uh, running oil and gas operations 101 out there, but, but for us, it was just a small gap between the guys in the field were out doing these well tests. Um, they're out running the day to day. They don't really know what the target was, and they're doing a well test, and 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 uh, uh, they're sending that into the office. They're thinking someone in the office is looking at it, and the guys in the office, the engineers in the office, are looking at it, and they're managing all kind of other concentric work and doing projects and all this other stuff. They're thinking the guys in the field are looking at it. We. Basically had two groups thinking someone's doing something with this data, and the fact of the matter is nobody was doing anything with it. Nor were they comparing it to what should have happened or what actually did happen. So, so it really kind of, for us, um, changed the way we look at things. Uh, the, kind of the, the next thing we did is we created a monthly meeting that the first two meetings are only the field guys, production foreman, PICs, and operators. The, uh, the monthly meeting, we want our production engineer talking to these guys, on a conference call, looking at what happened the prior month, in particular, well tests or outer variance than, than what he should thought they should be, and production that was above or below target for the whole field. Okay, and then also take the time to set the target for the next month. Okay, so we all of a sudden went from a one-year planning cycle to a one-month planning cycle, and it was updated to here's what's really going on out. So that's kind of my, my bottoms up, here's what we're going to do. On a quarterly basis, I have, uh, I've shifted to what I do is, uh, is quarterly performance reviews where I, I, look at funny, I look at the LOE data, I look at HSC, and I look at production. So one of the things I'm now doing in my quarterly performance meeting is we're looking at this same production information, how'd you do versus target, how'd you do versus budget, how'd you do versus theoretical. How, you know, where are you guys and, 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 and where are the gaps on that? And I can also look at BDR. How's our BDRs coming? Are we improving in a percentage of time that we're closer to those maximum rates or are we losing ground? And do we understand what's going on and why that's happening? So, uh, so we, we built a process um, around um, a lot of the things that we were doing and formalized others, and this wasn't real difficult to do. Now, I'll go back to a comment that I made earlier, which is I'm pretty sensitive about rolling out stuff to guys in the field because I, I was on the receiving end of this and, 
And, and some things that got rolled out, I didn't like it, but I understood I was at the bottom of the hill, and that's just kind of the nature of the game. Uh, but but I, 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 was, uh, I was real sensitive in building something that would be easy to implement, that would be received well, and, and more importantly, that didn't create a whole new bu uh, bureaucratic mess of reports and all these other things. So, so what ended up happening is we built on a little small piece into our morning report system that the engineers get in once a month and put some data, and all of a sudden it's doing all the analysis for the guys. It spits out the weekly report. It spits out the monthly report. I've got some examples of that right now. Here's a, here's a copy of the, uh, of the weekly report, and, and basically it's got every well. Here's the uh, casing flow and tubing. Um, uh, static and choke. And, uh, and, and here's, the, uh, here's the daily readings, here's the average, here's the target, and, and it tells you the exact percentage. So the guys can pretty quickly look at this and go, what's out of whack, and do I understand it? And we even highlight it in colors so it make it easier for them to identify. So, uh, you know, right here on this particular well, for some reason or another, our flow and tune pressure is down 19%. Now, so let's go look at it. Now, you know, there's a couple things, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll rewind back to... Um, a comment made early is, I don't know what, how do you know if you had a good day, I and mean, I have no idea, to a comment that's made since we implemented some of this in some of the field is, we're talking more about wells than we ever have. Duh. <laughs> you know, that's what it's about, guys. We're not going to get there unless we look at some of this stuff. Um, here's a, a copy of our uh, action, our field action task log. Again, this is something that we generate um, on, a, uh, on a weekly basis. And, and we set it up to where the guys um, uh, would have this meeting every Friday. And we crew change around Wednesday, Thursday. And the purpose of it was to review kind of here's what happened the last seven days and to plan for the next seven days. Well, one of the things, one of the consequences of this is it emphasizes the importance of pitch relief notes. Because when you get there on Friday, when you sit down on Friday, you're reviewing what happened for seven days when you weren't there in order to make a plan for the next seven days that you are going to be there. So, so it really kind of highlighted the importance of hitch relief nodes, and, and we put some structure around that to make sure that the guys knew how we wanted to approach that. So uh, some of these are, are, are going to be, uh, you know, they're, they're housekeeping compliance. Some of them will pop up where they're related to, uh, to wells. But it really put a focus on the facility and making sure that the facility allows me to accomplish what I'm trying to in my well. Here's a, uh, a, a, again, this is a weekly, and it's the same chart for monthly where we can, we can, we can compare our, theor this is our theoretical well, well test, our target from engineering, here's what we actually did in this week period. We can see what the differences are. And, and again, this is a tool to have the guys focusing in on what happened versus what we wanted to happen, and do we understand what's different? And it creates, it's meant to create a dialogue between the engineers and the guys in the field. And it's done in a structured manner so that we are talking about wells, talking about how they're producing on a more frequent basis than once a, once a month or once a quarter. Um, here's, a, here's a copy of the, uh, the BDR chart. It, the line in green right here is our 2010 average. The line in blue right here is our average, uh, year to, or average from uh, March to basically, we do it 90 days to, to uh, June on here. And, and you can see the red is the individual days, right? So, obviously, in, in, in you have events that take you at a 100% above your BDR, which means that you brought some new production on and you did a recomplete, you did so. You improved the efficiency of that production above and beyond. That's okay over a, note, over a long enough time period, that's going to roll off and it becomes part of the base. Um, but... All these are events, and you'll have a few of these. If we go back and look, this is when we had a pipeline outage. This is when we had a compressor overhaul. But if you look at it over a long enough period of time, at least for us, as a performance measure, I can look back at this and say, hey, on average, I was doing about 91% at this facility last year. On average, year to date, I'm, I'm up here just under 95%. So for us, I can look at it and say, we've improved. We've improved our efficiency. We're operating at a higher percentage of what our maximum rates are. Um, when you go down this path, one of the other things you figure out is you're, you're asking the guys to go do, and we, we kind of, uh, one of the things that came up in the field focus interviews was training. And, and so we said, okay, that's a fair 
point, to be honest with you, we did not do a whole lot of technical training. So we said, hey, we want to make sure that's not a, that's not a, a, a hindrance to us achieving our, our production results. And so when we started talking to, to the guys in the field, they said, yeah, we really do need some training. So we did some basic training um, on gas lift on glycol dehydration operation, on compressor operations. And, and the way we kind of uh, approach this is we actually developed a, uh, a skills matrix. And we have the skills matrix on here. And next slide. Can we get that in? I, I, I showed it to you. It, it basically said, here's all the skills from basic, average, advanced for, for 30 different skill sets that we can take each employee, walk them through and go, here's where he is, and then sit back and look at the facility and say, do we have a gap here that we need to close in order for this, this guy to be able to do his job better and help achieve some of the things we're trying to achieve? So, so we recognize that we need to do some technical skill training, and we need to do some planning skills. Um, you know, again, I'll go back to we, 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 uh, our, our operation tended to be a whole lot more proactive than it did reactive. And, and for some reason, the guys in the field kind of migrate towards that. You know, just it feels good to wake up and go, what needs to get done? And I'm going to do it as fast and best as I can. And at the end of the day, I go, I got her done. You know, but then when you start looking at doing work like that, a lot of times what happens is you can't build a supply chain or a logistics chain that's good enough to react to that. You, you can't have enough helicopters and boat running back and forth to shore every day to bring all the things that the guys need out there if they're deciding that morning what they're going to go work on. So we knew that was a really inefficient way to operate. So we started focusing on looking ahead a little bit. And, uh, and hitch relief communications was a critical piece that we identified needed to be more seamless. Uh, we also developed these weak, weekly action task logs and a process for saying, hey, the things that got on there, did we complete them? 